Dear audience, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andra Batungadi. I am a second year PhD student at the Center for Transitional Medicine. My supervisor is Balint Arius, my SMS is Mahmoud Avedad, and uh, my vision regarding to this topic is that we can reach a state where we can prevent most of the patients from the recurrence and the progression of acute pancreatitis, and my mission is to reduce this recurrence and progression rate. Here you can see a brief overview of my research projects. The first one is the incidence of recurrent and chronic pancreatitis after acute pancreatitis, a systematic review and meta-analysis. In this project, we investigated the recurrence and progression rates of acute pancreatitis based on the severity and the etiology of the first acute pancreatitis episode. The current status of this project is uh, under revision at the Therapeutic Advances Signal Strategy. Our second project uh, entitled the risk factors of acute pancreatitis progression into recurrent acute pancreatitis and chronic pancreatitis. This will be also a systematic review and meta-analysis. Let me briefly introduce its background. The incidence of acute pancreatitis varies globally, affecting from 5 to 80 people per 100,000 and appears to be increasing around the world. Most acute pancreatitis can be completely recovered after standard treatment, but the proportion of patients eventually develop recurrent acute pancreatitis up to 35% or chronic pancreatitis up to 24%. On the right figure, you can see the Sentinel acute pancreatitis event model by Whitcomb et al which says that uh, acute pancreatitis, recurrent acute pancreatitis, and chronic pancreatitis can represent a disease continuum. Data on the risk of developing REP and CP and the factors affecting disease progression have been heterogeneous. However, in order to reduce this recurrence and progression rates, it is essential to know all the risk factors that can contribute in the progression of acute pancreatitis. Therefore, our aim was to comprehensively assess all the factors that can contribute in the progression of AP. So we would like to uh, identify risk factors at this uh, second stage, specifically focusing on factors that contribute to acute pancreatitis progression rather than the risk factors for AP itself. Uh, as this study examines the risk factors of acute pancreatitis progression, we use the PO framework for posing the question. The population includes patients with a first episode of acute pancreatitis or patients with recurrent acute pancreatitis. The exposure involves the presence of a risk factor, the comparison is the absence of a risk factor, and the outcomes are either recurrent acute pancreatitis or chronic pancreatitis. We hypothesize that the presence of a risk factor increases the risk or odds of developing recurrent acute pancreatitis or chronic pancreatitis in these patients. To achieve our goal, we have done a systematic search in three major databases in PubMed, MBase, and Cochrane Library on the 25th of October 2022 using this search key. Uh, here you can see the flowchart for selection. Out of 23,000 articles, we included 71 in the quantitative synthesis after the title abstract and full text selection. Uh, before I present the results of our meta-analysis, I would like to emphasize a crucial aspect of our findings. What we identified are significant associations, not a definitive proof of causation. This distinction is vital because it means why our data show a significant relationship between certain parameters and an increased risk of recurrent acute pancreatitis or chronic pancreatitis. We cannot conclusively state that this uh, parameters cause this increased risk. And uh, additionally, it is important to note that uh, these uh, significant associations not necessarily validate these parameters as independent risk factors, uh, since our analysis could not control for all potential confounding variables. Now I'm going to show you some of our results. On this forest plot, uh, we investigated the association between uh, diabetes mellitus and the risk of recurrent acute pancreatitis. Nine retrospective and uh, prospective core studies were included in the analysis. The exposure group inclu included uh, patients with acute pancreatitis and diabetes mellitus. The comparison group included patients with acute pancreatitis without diabetes mellitus. The event of interest was the development of recurrent acute pancreatitis. As we anticipated a considerable between study heterogeneity, a random effect model was used to pool effect sizes, and for the effect size measure, we used odds ratio with a 95% confidence interval. Uh, here we found that uh, among patients with acute pancreatitis, the presence of diabetes mellitus was associated with an increased risk of recurrent acute pancreatitis. And since the confidence interval does not include one, this result is statistically significant. Here we uh, investigated the association between hypertriglyceridemia and the risk of recurrent acute pancreatitis. And uh, we found that uh, patients with hypertriglyceridemia had a more than two times higher risk of developing recurrent acute pancreatitis compared to patients without hypertriglyceridemia. Uh, we also investigated the association between local complications and the risk of recurrent acute pancreatitis. And we found that 
uh, among patients with uh, acute pancreatitis, the presence of local complications, such as pseudotis or acute peripancreatic fluid collections, were also associated with a significantly increased risk of recurrent acute pancreatitis. Uh, we also investigated the pediatric population, and here we found that uh, among patients with acute pancreatitis, the presence of anatomical abnormality was also associated with a significantly increased risk of recurrent acute pancreatitis. We also investigated the uh, association between genetic mutations and the risk of chronic pancreatitis. And uh, here we found that among patients with recurrent acute pancreatitis, the presence of genetic mutations was uh, also associated with a significantly increased risk of chronic pancreatitis. Uh, our study uh, additionally, our study uh, identified alcohol consumption and uh, smoking as uh, sequential risk factors. They not only significantly increase the risk of recurrent acute pancreatitis, but also the transition from recurrent acute pancreatitis to chronic pancreatitis. Considering the strength of our study, this will be the first meta-analysis investigating the risk factors of acute pancreatitis progression into chronic pancreatitis. The strict inclusion criteria, uh, we included only articles where acute pancreatitis was defined according to the Atlanta classification, uh, its comprehensiveness, it covers a wide range of factors investigating 62 different parameters effect on the progression of acute pancreatitis. Our study also identified alcohol consumption and smoking as risk factors on the wall acute pancreatitis, recurrent acute pancreatitis, and chronic pancreatitis axis. Considering the limitations, the majority of the included studies were retrospective, the presence of the confounding factors, and the, our study identifies associations but does not establish causality. Considering uh, the clinical implication, we have so far identified several modifiable risk factors, which is clinically important because by eliminating these risk factors, we may be able to reduce the recurrence and progression rates in these patients. <laughs> also, the uh, identified risk factors can help the clinicians in the risk stratification of these patients. Uh, our study highlights the importance of uh, patient awareness, the highlights the importance of secondary prevention, such as cholecystectomy, alcohol, smoking, cessation programs, uh, lifestyle changes, diet, hyperlipidemia treatment, etc. Uh, and uh, considering the implication for research, our study highlights the need for prospective multicenter studies assessing acute pancreatitis progression with longer follow-up times for all the included patients. This is the current status of our manuscript. Uh, we would like to submit to the American Journal of Gastroenterology. Uh, our third project will be also a meta-analysis, and it also focuses on the progression of acute pancreatitis. A few words about its background. The annual incidence rate of chronic pancreatitis varies between 5 and 12 cases per 100,000 person a year. Chronic pancreatitis is a severe condition that greatly deteriorates quality of life and reduces life expectancy, and currently there is no specific curative treatment available. A common belief is that acute pancreatitis, recurrent acute pancreatitis, and chronic pancreatitis represents uh, this is continuum, as uh, I previously presented, by the Sentinel Acute Pancreatitis Event Model. Uh, why uh, this uh, uh, model posits that uh, Sentinel Acute Pancreatitis Event sensitizes the pancreas to recurrent acute pancreatitis, which subsequently leads to chronic pancreatitis as a result of ongoing stressors and inflammatory responses. Uh, while the sentinel acute pancreatitis event model is an interesting uh, hypothesis, it implies that all chronic pancreatitis originate from acute pancreatitis. However, a considerable number of chronic pancreatitis patients have no history of prior acute pancreatitis episodes. In light of this discrepancy, our aim is to comprehensively assess the proportion of chronic pancreatitis patients with no history of prior acute pancreatitis episodes. Uh, for this project, we have two clinical questions. We would like to know the proportion of patient, chronic pancreatitis patients with uh, no history of prior acute pancreatitis episodes, and uh, we would like to know the specific characteristics of this patient's population. Uh, for, we have done the uh, preliminary research. Uh, we already found six key articles. The topic is feasible. A uh, brief summary of my uh, research projects, and uh, thank you for your attention. Hi, Andrea. Great progress, first of all. Uh, I have a question about your project on the risk factors. Do you think we could go back to the last forest plot that you showed? Um, yeah, so here, the, the last study, Sun et al., looks like it's a clear um, outlier. The confidence intervals are not overlapping at all. Do you know why that would be? Have you checked? I tried to check. However, I, 
I did not uh, identify any uh, significant difference compared to the other. So it's consecutive AP patients with follow-up times. So you don't know why is, the is, uh, odds ratio there is almost double to that that you found in the other studies? May maybe the center where they uh, so this, the 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 hospital is a uh, more advanced probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, thank you. You have mentioned that uh, uh, high triglyceride levels are increased uh, are increasing the, the risk of recurrent uh, acute pancreatitis. Can you establish any cutoff value? How high should they be? That high triglyceride levels are associated with increased risk of recurrent acute pancreatitis, right? So, uh, in the majority of the included studies, the hypertriglyceride was uh, the cutoff value was for that. Uh, 11 and 0.9. Yeah, it, it is known that 11 point something yes. is associated with acute pancreatitis even, but for the recurrent one, do you have also the same cutoff or can you establish any cutoff for those? It's a very good question. We, uh, uh, so far we didn't uh, establish any uh, cutoff value, but very interesting. Thank you. Okay, you showed that uh, alcohol consumption, diet, and smoking are the risk factors for uh, having a recurrent acute pancreatitis. All of these factors can be eliminated by the patient. Can we do doctors anything to prevent the recurrence? I mean, for example, enzyme uh, supplementation or something like this. So do we have any therapeutic option to prevent the recurrence of the... Therapeutic option? Yeah, or preventive option, because all of the you mentioned is done by the patient. I mean, the diet, don't yes. do not drink. Yes, uh, uh, only the cholecystectomy, but we identified regarding uh, biliary pancreatitis patients. And, uh, yeah, uh, repeated psychological interventions. Uh, there are some studies that show that uh, it helps uh, decrease the recurrence. So, so no data uh, closer, regarding closer the enzyme time with, supplementation. With, with, no data regarding enzyme supplementation. Uh, I'm not aware. Any of it. Well, first of all, thank you again for the presentation. My question has to do with the risk stratification that you mentioned on one of your slides. Yes. Uh, I just want to ask your opinion on how do you imagine this um, cooperation between the dietitian, the clinical psychologist that you mentioned? Do you have, based on the um, literature that you've covered so far, do you have something in mind? I mean, how can this cooperation function in an everyday scenario? Like, how can I, as a psychologist, help this uh, risk stratification assessment? Do you have something in mind, mind based on the literature that you've covered? Uh, so th there, there are <coughs> quite a few articles that, where they recommend a specific treatment group okay. uh, to treat uh, these patients. Um, what do you mean particularly? Uh, this uh, this, this, uh, the, the, the part when you were talking about the cessation programs really got my interest. For example, we could be uh, of yes, help the, uh, when it comes to the assessment of smoking, alcohol consumption, or other psychological factors that affect uh, these for, things. For instance, there are studies where, where they uh, show that uh, brief and repeated psychological interventions uh, uh -huh. can achieve significant uh, improvement. In so significantly decrease the recurrence uh -huh. rate. So 